Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Hayley from So Hayley Jane and I'm here today to show you my most recent makes. It has been a little while since I've done a makes video so I think everything I'm showing you was sort of uh, made over the summer and rec more recently as well. So I think my last one was probably in June or July yeah I think June or July because this is the oldest of the makes I've got to show you and I made this in August so yes a few months of makes to show you not a lot I probably average one maybe two garments a month so um, not a huge amount a couple of quick and easy ones to show you um, and then a couple of mm, this is probably the most detailed one that I've done. So this is my Maya Sotis dress um, that I made using this stunning viscose fabric that was in my boxes. So I'll click a link below to show you um, the, the boxes that I'm talking about. So if you don't know, if you're new here, I run um, So Hilly Jane, which is a dressmaking subscription box company. Um, and this fabric and the pattern went into July's Palm Springs boxes, which was curated by Kate and Rachel from the Fold Line. Um, so a very special box. That was my first collaboration box. Um, so I'm very excited. And yeah, so the Maya Sotis dress, um, I have the pattern actually right here. Um, I have been intrigued by the Myosotis for a little while, but didn't think I would be able to pull it off. I'm very curvy, I've got big boobs, big hips, big bum. Um, and I kind of thought with the loose floatiness of the dress, it would just kind of sit on my boobs and my hips and make the whole of me look like a giant square. Um, but the more I've seen it, the more I've liked it. So I thought, do you know what? I've got the pattern, I'll give it a go. Um, I did make a toile. I've got to try and remember what I did now. I went for the largest size, I think. Uh, no, I didn't. I went for the size 44 at the bust and then graded out to a 46 at the waist. Um, uh, but I made the toile in a cotton which was um, a much stiffer and it was kind of straining across my back. So I did a full bicep adjustment to kind of loosen it up across my back. And I also reduced my seam allowance because it fit okay, otherwise it was just a tiny bit tight. So I did a three eighths of an inch seam allowance rather than a five eighths. Um, and so let me show you, I'll show you the full thing first. So I'm just going to move the camera back. So just wearing it with leggings today. It's a bit more of a summery dress really this one, especially in the floaty fabric. Um, I'm not sure, maybe it goes with leggings and biker boots <laughs> uh, to give it a bit more of a rocky edge. But this is the full thing. As you can see, I added some ties at the waist because without the ties, I think I was right. It just kind of gives a bit of a granny look for me personally. So I wanted to bring it in at the waist. So when I originally made it, I did the full length skirt and then added the ruffle. I never really thought I was a ruffly person, but I really wanted to give it a go. I figured I could just take it off anyway if I didn't like it, but I wanted to give it a go. So I did the full length skirt, added the ruffle, and then a last minute change of plans, I decided to go for the sleeve ruffle as well. When I put it on, I was completely drowned by it. Totally drowned by it. Uh, it looked massive on me. Um, I posted on Instagram stories. I had lots of lovely comments saying it still looks great, but maybe you could bring it in at the waist. Maybe it's too long. It was definitely too long. I should have gone for um, the proper length skirt with the ruffle as well, because um, I took about eight inches off the skirt piece, I think. Um, and then the other thing, I felt like the sleeve ruffle was too long on me. So I actually shortened the ruffle by half 
So it was actually supposed to be about here, which meant that I had extra volume at my hips and it just, yeah, looked massive. Um, so yeah, I shortened that and I'm really happy with it now. The only thing, I am doing another one and I have done, so the sleeve head is here. I think I'm gu guessing it's supposed to be slightly off the shoulder, um, but on my next one, I've just reduced the shoulder seam there a little bit, just to bring it up a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, I'm really happy construction was really straightforward. The biggest thing that I was impressed with was that the bust start pretty much is in exactly the right place, <laughs> which never happens. Or well, it feels like it's in the right place. It feels like it fits really beautifully around um, my bust. So I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah, it's quite bright actually with the, the pattern. I'm glad it's got a dark background because the pattern's quite bold and out there. Um, but I love it. I definitely think it's more summer appropriate. Um, I think flamingos works for the summer. <laughs> but I'm really happy. So that was pattern number one. I shall go and change into pattern number two. Okay, make number two is a little bit crinkled because it's been shoved in my bag for the last few days whilst I've been trying to get around to filming this video, is the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. I initially was a bit skeptical about, skill, a bit skeptical about this dress until I did the Myosotis dress, which um, is kind of similar in that it's very floaty and loose fitting. And because I added the waist ties to the Myosotis, I thought I would give it a go with this one as well. This is my second indigo, <laughs> so it's clearly worked. My first indigo I'll link to below because I did a chatty sewing video whilst I sewed that one up. Um, and yeah, this is the next one. So trying to remember what size I cut out. So I cut out, I think, a size eight at the bust and then graded to a nine or 10 at the hips, I think. I think that's what I've done. Um, I also, um, because my last indigo had a bit of gaping at the neckline, so I took a two centimeter wedge out of the neckline, which transferred that into the bust start. Um, and then I also reduced the length of the shoulder seam because the shoulders were hanging off my shoulder so I took I can't remember now I think maybe a centimeter and a half off of the shoulder seam so here it is like I said a bit rumpled but otherwise super happy with it this is the double gauze fabric that was in November's pajama party classic boxes I got this made straight away and I really love it the other thing I did was to lengthen the bodice by a couple of inches might need might have needed a little bit more actually to bring it down here. Um, the other thing I would do if I did this again it would be to lower the bust start slightly. It's a little bit high. It needs to be lowered just a tad. You see it's got pockets and yeah, super happy with it. I did the bracelet, so I've shown you, I did the bracelet length sleeves which end here, which I don't like hugely actually. Um, but I had just rolled, rolled it up a couple of times and I might add a little button tab to the sleeves um, as an extra detail as well. So I prefer it rolled up slightly. But I wanted to, I didn't want to go for the flouncy sleeve option with this one um, so that I could wear it with a cardigan or a jumper even in the winter. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, super happy with it. Um, I shall go and put on my next make. Okay, next two makes. The first one is a Tilly and the Buttons Coco, which is the fourth Coco that I've made. Um, made using this really gorgeous striped jersey that I got from Satisfaction when they, Shona bought Satisfaction to my studio for a pop-up shop back in May, I think it was in May, which is ages ago. Um, and this cocoa top I made at the sewing weekend in August. I wanted a nice, easy project to do so that I could uh, spend lots of time chatting. And yeah, I'm so happy with it actually. Although I am gonna point it out, pattern matching. 
Am I bothered? Is that bothered? I don't care. I have not got time to deal with pattern matching and actually I didn't have enough fabric for pattern matching anyway. Um, and you know what? I've worn this so much, no one has noticed. I think uh, as sewists we all put a bit too much um, importance on pattern matching. If it's at the side seam, so I can see. Obviously if you're trying to pattern match in something down the centre front, if you're trying to pattern match something down the centre front, I spend a bit more time on that. But on the side seams it's just a bit, my arms are there. And I've bought stripy clothes from high street stores before that weren't pattern matched and I was I didn't even notice until I started sewing. So I understand we all want to make things as perfect as possible, but don't worry. I'm not worried. I don't care. <laughs> I'm still really happy with it. Um I haven't got the pattern with me, I'm trying to remember. I think I made the biggest size, which was in I think a size eight. Um, yeah, just simple, straightforward. And then I've paired it with my latest make. I've just finished this. This is the Zinnia skirt by Colette. Um, so I'll move the camera back a little bit so you can see. So it's not hemmed yet. Um, I was letting it hang because it's cut on a bias. So I wanted it to hang before I hemmed it. Um, I don't think I need to worry about re, um, what's the word? leveling it off. Uh, but yes, this is the Zinnia skirt. It's quite an old pattern by Colette um, and it's made in a chambray that I put in my February Galentine's Day boxes. And I had this fabric put to one side for me for months and months and months and I couldn't decide what I wanted to make with it. Um, I don't know why I was so indecisive with it and in the end I just went, do you know what? Just a simple skirt would be perfect. So it's gathered at the waistband, buttons down the front. This version actually has patch pockets on the front, but I um, changed it for inseam pockets instead. A bit more practical. Um, again, I made the largest size, which I think is an 18. And then I actually added a little bit more width to the waistband because the 18 was just a little bit small for me. Apologies for all the different camera angles. <laughs> um, I really like it, but it feels like one of those garments that I love, but that is going to make me feel quite conspicuous when I wear it, if you know what I mean. I'm not great at standing out in the crowd. Um, and I mean, it is. I think it is flattering. It brings me in at the waist, but then I it's these kind of skirts that I always feel make me look even bigger on the hips but I don't want it to sit in the wardrobe I want to wear it I want to be proud of it I want to be proud of my body and what I look like so I'm going to use this pattern for Sewis Faction's one week one pattern challenge if you follow Sewis Faction on Instagram it's a challenge that's been going around for a couple of years now I think Tilly and the Button started it and then Sewis Faction took it over so the aim of the challenge is one week and you choose one pattern. So it can be one pattern that you've made several times. It can be one pattern that you've made and hacked into different, with di added different bits and pieces to it. Or it can just be one garment, for example, a skirt or a dress styled in different ways. So I've decided to use this skirt for one week. I'm going to wear it. Fingers crossed my uh, nearly two-year-old daughter doesn't get mess on it. <laughs> um, and I'm going to style it up in different ways. I think this combination works quite well. I've got um, shirts that I can wear tucked in, jumpers, various tops. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. And I'm going to document it um, on Instagram. And also I'm going to video it as well so that I can... Um, put it up on YouTube. So yeah, what do you think? Do you like it? Let me know. Be honest in a nice way. I think it looks really nice. Maybe I should have gone for pleats. I don't know, but nah, I like it. Okay, I have one more top to show you, which I'm going to wear with this skirt. Um, and I'm not too sure about it. So 
let me just change into that. Okay, last one to show you. It is the Linden sweatshirt with gorgeous, um, yes, with gorgeous French Terry sweatshirt that I got from Sew Me Sunshine when she did a remnant sale. So there was only a metre and a half of this fabric. It's um, navy with mustard. <laughs> what looks like mustard actually on the front. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, and I took this, this was my second project for the sewing weekend as well. So I took this along. Um, but I didn't have enough fabric for the neckband, the cuffs and the waistband. But I thought I'd take it anyway because I knew there was going to be a fabric swap and I was hoping somebody would bring something. Um, but actually I was sat next to Abigail from So Abigail on Instagram and she didn't say she could drive home that night and she said she had some blue, I think it's a ponty, um, that she bought with her the next day so that I could have that, which was really sweet. So thank you very much, Abigail. Um, so yeah, Linden sweatshirt. I This is the third one that I've made. Um, I can't remember the size I made it. I don't have it with me. But I know I made a smaller size to fit my high bust because I'm quite busty. And if I made a size to fit my full bust, it would have been massive up here. So I made the size to fit my full bust and then just graded out to the hips. However, because I didn't have quite enough fabric, I went with the original pattern rather than the lengthened pattern, which I did for my last one. And it does feel too short when I wear it with jeans. Um, I've still got my zinnia skirt on at the moment, but which I might wear it tucked into my zinnia skirt. Maybe I could pull that off, I don't know, but it just hits at the sort of the biggest part of my tummy and when I wear it with jeans it just it doesn't feel comfortable and it rides up all the time as well which isn't great so um but yeah I might try wearing it tucked in um for a bit of warmth to go with the zinnia skirt and I'm also hoping to make a cashmere Ellis denim mini skirt um which I think might work better with a cropped jumper as well um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching and I will be back next week with a sort of sew and tell. I have a few lovely things, things that I've won in raffles, things that have been gifted to me that I would love to show you. So I'll be back next week with one of those. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all really soon. Bye!